So on day one, when we come in, uh, it's a blank canvas. It's a complete empty room. Going from rehearsals to the show is really just adapting from the rehearsal venue to your concert venue. It doesn't matter how big or how small the tour is, if you're not prepared and you're not ready to keep everybody running in that same direction, it's gonna be really tough for you to get through it. As many moving parts and tiny parts that there are to this and intricacies, it's, I mean, it's never gonna be put it up for the first time and it's great. That's why we're here. When I look over there, it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. <laughs> so my name is Alan Ditto. I am uh, Martina McBride's production manager. You know, for our tour, it probably goes a little bit further than a normal production manager's because we're so skeleton crew-wise. We just don't need a ton of people, so all of us do a lot of jobs, uh, including myself. I started as a set carpenter on tour, and uh, I made it my mission kind of to go and watch what everyone does for the first four or five years I was out here. If I wanted to learn as much as I could from as many people as I could, and luckily with Martina and the crew that they've always had out, no one ever felt threatened. They just were like, yeah, absolutely, we'll show you. So I was able to learn and, and uh, just really kind of broaden what I was able to do. So as different positions became available throughout the years, I was kind of the guy standing there and I said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And so um, uh, that's just, you kind of trial by fire, but learning as you go. And that's, that's, they gave me the wonderful opportunity to do that. So the, the Christmas tour over the years has kind of morphed into what it is now. And uh, each year is a little bit different. We add stuff, we take stuff away, we change things. So it's not exactly the same as the year prior. Christmas also is very unique. I mean, it's not like you can go do a Christmas tour and do 50 shows. Uh, you've got a very short amount of time in the year the Christmas tour can take place. So you're not hitting a ton of the country. So yeah, I start probably in June, figuring out if we're gonna change anything, ideas of what we might change. Myself and Andre Huff, who's the uh, designer, will sit and talk and, and come up with ideas, and then I'll take those to Martina, or we'll both take them to Martina, and she can say, yeah, that's great, or no, let's not do that. And that's kind of where we end up today. And so uh, the planning starts probably back then. I start advancing with the buildings in September of this year. Before we ever come to the rehearsal space where we're able to hang everything, there are prep days. It was a unique situation this year where we had shows all the way up till last week. So we can't really flip our current rig, audio and lighting rig until those shows are completed. Uh, so we got those shows done and then we immediately went into Claire Brothers here in Nashville or Claire Global here in Nashville and took our current audio rig and try and get all that kind of stuff flipped done and ready to go. So when we move in here, we just put it up and we go right into tweaking things, uh, making uh, things look prettier. The day before we loaded into rehearsals, my days consist of going through everything, honestly, making sure that I didn't forget anything. You know you can prepare all you want to and all that, but until you pull up to the venue and you see both trucks sitting there that you loaded the day before and you know that they're on the same page with you and then your stage hands show up on time and all that kind of stuff starts happening, that's when you really know that everything's gonna be okay. Because all you can do is plan and communicate, and it's up to the people that you've communicated with to do what they're supposed to do. So 99.9% .9 of my job is communication. There's so much that can go wrong. There's so much that can get missed. There's so much that can happen as long as you got the right people in place that you don't have to worry about them doing their job. You can do yours, and you know they're taking care of their stuff your job becomes a lot easier. But it doesn't matter how big or how small the tour is, if you're not prepared and you're not ready to keep everybody running in that same direction, it's gonna be really tough for you to get through it. My name's Andre Huff and I am the lighting designer slash kind of co-visual designer of the show. Once we kind of know what is the same from the years before or what's changed and everything, then I can put a gear list together that I send to uh, our lighting rep and then that gets entered into their system so it reserves that gear for us for that time of that time of year gear is at a premium so you always want to get your stuff in early so about summertime no later than you know early fall you know do you want to have your equipment list in so yeah so you know the trucks are about to pull in we're gonna get those dumped and get everything in here and put it up and see where we're sitting and uh, get on with rehearsals. It's 
so you show up to empty venue. Uh, first thing you do is Al and I will get together and we'll look at how closely we can lay out the, the motor points uh, that we use to hang all our equipment. And then have to get power, of course, to everything so we can start lifting motors. And kind of at the same time we're doing that, we get people to uh, put the trussing together. As always, there's a few hiccups that come along the way, but you expect that when you're doing something for the first time. And as many moving parts and tiny parts that there are to this and intricacies, it's, I mean, it's never going to be put it up for the first time and it's great. That's why we're here, is to work out all those kinks so when we go to the first show, it's not those kinks. Typically when load-in happens, I am usually far stage right or center stage, just kind of directing the lighting trusses where they go. So yeah, directing lighting trusses, motors, what equipment has to go, our distribution equipment usually stays stage right. So just directing all that, getting it all open, you know, get the hands to get it all open and ready for the day. We get power from the house, of course, we get with the house electrician. Usually by then, before load-in, we've gotten with the house electrician, figured out where we're gonna run power. Uh, so we'll get the hands to run power from that source to our distribution so then we can start lifting motors as the riggers get the motors put in the air and then at, again at the same time we've got stage hands putting all the truss together uh, and then we'll run cables the cables that we need to run back to our distribution we'll get run back to there get motors hooked up and then every again everything starts floating in the air ernie is really good he'll he'll get my console out and everything for me so i just kind of show up and hook everything up so after we get the rig floating in the air on a good day, I mean, I'm out there within two hours after we start. How's it going? My name is Ernie Gonzalez. I'm the front of house tech on the Martina Joy of Christmas tour. So on day one, when we come into the full rehearsal room where we have to, the full production, the full stage, the full rig goes up in the air, um, we try to concentrate on getting everything in nice and slow, nice and easy, taking our time with stuff, making sure everything is lined up right and, uh, and put in place the way we want. So on day one, when we come in, uh, it's a blank canvas. It's a complete empty room and we build the entire stage like we would on any show or during the tour. You know, we do uh, uh, a sound checks, full audio rehearsals, dress rehearsals, things like that. Whenever you get into a building, you never know what the power situation is going to be like. And, Things like that, so you may have you know ground loops or hums or buzzes and stuff like that. So we had to trace down a few yesterday, but we were able to do that and, and get it sussed pretty quick. So yeah, during during load in and during the whole process of building it, I'm everywhere. I don't have the luxury of having a 20 person crew. So me and Nick both share the kind of the stage managerial type of things on stage where if he's busy hanging lights or doing stuff that he can't get away from, then I'll take over and do, we, we work really well together like that. So I can kind of see where he is and see if he can handle what's going on next or what needs to happen next. And then vice versa, if I'm in deep in it, he'll take over. So there's really not during a load in time for any of us to not be doing anything because everyone out here has multiple jobs and uh, multiple responsibilities. My name is Nick Molino. My role here on the Martina McBride tour, Christmas tour, there's a couple different things. Primarily, it's uh, being guitar tech for uh, the guitar player, Greg Forsman. But I also do uh, lighting and audio sides of things. For rehearsals coming into here, day one, we kind of dump the truck. Once we dump the truck, I immediately pretty much started putting all the truss together. So the downstage truss is, during prep, is one thing I did at Christy with uh, Andre Huff. He had all the lights laid out in the truss and the spaces. Um, so I just came in and wired it up. Uh, so that's pretty much my first thing in the mornings whenever we're on the road will be once we're in for the day, finding out, you know, if we're able to use our downstage, it's five sticks. So sometimes we'll have to lose the center. If the stage isn't wide enough for all five, we'll lose the center. Um, same with the upstage. It's all, the rig is built to be a little bit modular depending on what size uh, room we're in for the day. Yeah, so we've uh, floated all the upstage truss. Nick's working on floating the downstage truss. And now currently, since this is the first time we've put power to everything, I've got to go through and address uh, all the fixtures, which is telling them when I send them signal what they're supposed to listen to. Fast forward a little bit. Once that's flown, 
Next thing is usually building risers or rolling up marley. Um, just depends on the space that we have for that day. If we're able to roll out the marley, the marley, as you can see, is white. We try not to get too much stuff on it because the casters from the set pieces or risers, if they're dirty, can leave marks on it. So we try to get those in place or upstage, roll out the marley, then put those in place. And once those are all kind of in place, then I'm able to start putting in the drum set. I'm able to put in the piano where it needs to go. And then that'll help frame in where all the rest of the players are gonna be. My name is Glenn Collette. I'm the monitor engineer for Martina McBride. Monitors being the sound that's on the stage that the musicians hear versus the front of house, the audience sound that's mixed out for the audience. So monitors is just for the players on stage, supply them with what they need, what they might be missing. First thing when I go in is, okay, what's the space like? How can I make use of it and make sure there's enough room to have everything and have it work? Going from rehearsals to the show is really just adapting from the rehearsal venue to your concert venue. But everything comes over to the stage hands just get directed. Take everything over to that side or that side or to front of house. And I just receive and tell them specifically where to go, get them to park it. And then when the labor becomes available, we'll flip my console up on because it takes four people to do it. Meanwhile, as, as I'm going along, I'm placing everything as the AC distro comes in, I will make sure and either contact whoever is local that has to run the power or either, or we do it ourselves and get that fired up. And uh, as soon as everything's in, for me, I just start patching everything together and the hands then move to lighting and whatever else they're doing, setting up staging. And I'm, I pretty much do my zone on my own. That it's one little area and you can't really have a bunch of people in there. So I just patch it all together and away we go. These are snow machines. Um, I'm setting the level for them and making sure they work. They haven't been used for a year. So uh, at the end of the year, every year, we uh, take all the fluid out of them. So we're repriming them. Um, and once they're set, they're just, it's literally just an on off switch and a speed control is all it is. They're on two circuits of this truss, and over there, stage right in Dimmer World, they are the first two uh, breakers. So whenever there's a couple times in the show, Martina wants snow to fall. So we'll go over there, flip the breakers for 20 seconds or whatever, and then flip them off whenever they need to go out, whenever the whole audience is covered in snow. And we've done our job. So right now, guys, we are uh, getting ready to run the snake. Unfortunately, at the last show we did, it was a uh, mud and rain fest so uh, our guys here are helping us clean the snake that way it's uh, nice clean and pretty and ready to go and uh, we should get audio up here pretty soon lighting looks like it's uh, pretty much done getting up in the air so we should be making some noise real soon The one thing that's a little different with a rehearsal day, unlike the regular day, is we'll get this rig up in three and a half hours on a show day. It was five o'clock before we were really to a stopping place yesterday, just because we're putting a lot of stuff together that hasn't been together all year and that we had to completely build from the start again. So once that all that happens, then it becomes a lot easier. It's kind of like building a house. You know, you, you seem to, you know, they start from scratch with with construction, walls, roof, all that stuff goes on really fast. Then they get to the interior part of it, and it's all the intricate stuff, and that's what stops everything. It just Everything just comes to a crawl. So there's lots of little things that have to happen. You always want to do it like a show, and you have to, I have to really make myself pull back and go, this isn't a show day. This is a first load-in day at a rehearsal place, and we're just trying to figure it all out. My goal for the end of today is that we are show ready. So basically, when the band walks in tomorrow morning for rehearsals, A, we're ready for the band, meaning everything that they use, microphones, ears, all that kind of stuff works. But B, safety-wise, we're good. There's walking places. We have dedicated places for people to get around where they're not going to trip. Everything's taped down. 
Cases are out of the way. It looks presentable and nice when they walk in. It doesn't look like we just laid everything out everywhere. If there's cables going across, we're taping the cable. We're, for every little thing, we're looming extra things together, figuring problems out that aren't working. If there's data issues with the lighting rig, getting that sorted out. All the floor light stuff, there's, there's more floor light dimmers and fixture places on this tour than the, the, when the, what's in the air, because you have all the Christmas trees and you have, I mean, there's so, there's. Uh, at some point there'll be snow on the uh, on the Marley that'll look like puffy snow with lights under that that light up and blink and you know so so it's it's there's just all this little intricate stuff that has to happen we have to get it to work first and that's what the second day is all about we have 13 Christmas trees uh, that all have require uh, you know cables going to them moving lights on the floor LED lights on the floor so there's a lot of a lot of stuff that gets plugged in on top of, you know, that is all the band stuff and audio stuff that goes on stage. That's one of my jobs on tour is I'm the backline tech. So uh, I'll set up drums usually first or dump the piano, whichever one kind of happens. A WFL3 kit. Um, we got Zildjian cymbals and a pretty standard mic setup with VP88 just for monitors overheads 414 same with our hi-hats 414 57 on snare 421s on toms and a sm81 on our ride uh we also have an alesis sample pad for cross stick and snaps um which that's all we use it for um just because how low we plays helps him get a more consistent cross stick sound uh we have a backup snare just sitting there ready for whenever he breaks ahead on this one but especially for christmas music he's mainly using brushes so that won't be an issue um, once that's done, then I'll run over and get bass set up. It's just a small pedal board. This is Bass World. So he's got his little pedal board down here. Uh, nothing too great on it. We do have an uh, Wolfbox DI, one of the Acme ones, uh, one of the original ones that uh, John bought. Um, has one original Motown Transformer in it. For this tour, we're not using RF for our uh, bass player or guitar player. So they're just wired. Um, makes it easy, they're not moving anywhere. So once those connections are in, they'll run to their stage box. And then um, I'll move on over to Greg Forsman's area. It's a little bit more, I just have a way of like setting it up. He's our only player on wedges. Martina has six wedges, but he's the only guy that's strictly on wedges. He might use ears for one song, just depends. For our guitar player's rig, uh, pretty solid, easy setup. Tried and true, works great for him. He's got his pedal board here, wedge, a couple stands for his guitars that he'll be switching through throughout the show. His amps are over here off stage. Once their worlds are all built, uh, we'll start putting up all this set and all the art department stuff, I guess is what I like to call it. So all the trees come down to a dimmer. Each dimmer obviously has its own address. Then we also have like some floor lights. We've got some circus scoops upstage on the ground and we have six up in the air that will help take the color of the Austrian from blue. We can make it red, we make it white, whatever color we want. Um, the Austrian is the big uh, curtain uh, all the way upstage. So the bandstands are all DMX controlled and so they all in individually have their own addresses. So we just have to make sure every day that those get put in the correct spot. That's pretty much it for the stage stuff. Uh, we haven't put out our snow yet, but once we get to that, it'll be, it'll really ties in the stage. It hides a multitude of sins as well, which is great. Now today we are continuing on getting the floor stuff wired, all the Christmas trees situated and everything, make sure everything's plugged up and get all that going. So then after we do that, while they're doing that, I'll also, I'm starting to update my positions, focus positions of all the lights uh, for the show. Yeah, to get ready for full band rehearsals, we, do, we usually have a couple of tech day rehearsals where you know, we sit down with the consoles, myself, the monitor engineer, stage manager, uh, backline personnel, and uh, go through all the consoles we set up. We do patching and, uh, and kind of make sure all our, all our patches are all together and we're all on the same page. So coming into the tour audio-wise and when we spec audio and consoles and stuff like that, we are on digital consoles because the Christmas tour is a little more, we have more inputs than we do on our normal show. Uh, we have string players, we have horn players, 
And uh, so we need a, more input. So we, we use the Yamaha digital consoles for this tour. Yep. Two, two. So uh, me and Alan made all of our uh, cross stage looms for audio. So we've got one, the whole idea is that her quick change, which is off stage left, there's a path that'll come back behind the horn players and then right out the middle, up center and that there is no cables that are gonna be in her walkway at all. So earlier I had talked about that we keep a pathway clear for Martina. Um, I'm gonna walk you back through that pathway that she'll take to get her down center for everybody. Come on through. Right now we've got all these beautiful true ones laying everywhere that will get covered in snow and everything. These are those circus scoops that'll like this, but uh, all right here, all this is all open for her. This cable is running all the way around over to stage right in our uh, dim beach world and to our uh, Sockos and everything over there. Um, and then all of our audio cables running on the backside behind the Austrian and coming back out over there. Um, so if, if, you know, if sitting, she can change right here and whenever she walks out here, she's ready. She doesn't worry about any cables. Um, she doesn't like cable ramps usually. Um, so this makes it really easy for she doesn't think about anything just going out there and spreading some christmas cheer my name is marianne kruger and i handle martina's wardrobe for her christmas shows so this this is the quick change booth and it lives at at the end of the curtain on the stage uh, there will be a dressing table in it there is a dress rack that goes in it and two chairs, one for her and one for the dresses that we take off to throw on the chair until I can get them hung up. Um, and this quick change booth is relatively easy to put up. It looks like a duck blind, but it's dark enough that the audience can't see it. So it's exactly at the end of the stage because she has 90 seconds to get from stage center to walk all the way back around the trees, get in here, get her clothes changed and get back out. And that's earrings and dress and new shoes. All of that happens in 90 seconds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, checking the volume and the tone of the vocal mic. I mean, if I, when I go, hey, hey, then you hear the, you, you hear the two, five, three K region, and if, if it bites a little bit at you, then you know you've got enough. And obviously, uh, s -s -s test, test, you that kind of, you get the T's is the high end, and I go through a little chromatic scale to get the low bass, the mid bass, the ooh, 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 and if none of the notes jump out of the other ones, if they're all the same volume, then you know you got it right. Right now, the house is off. Mm -hmm. So I like to know where it sits with the house off. And then when Ernie turns the house on, we do it again together. Because what he does in the room has an effect of what you hear up here. The, the object is set up all, all the gear, get the stage set up, patch the stage, all the mics and everything. And then we do a line check, which we ended up doing this morning, to check every line, make sure everything comes up in the right places. And then I get all the wireless units and lay them out for, the, for when the players come tomorrow the string players and horn players, everybody has a custom little way of attaching microphones to their instruments. Might take Velcro wrapped around the fiddle or something to hold everything, transmitters in place so that there's an area where they do that, get themselves set up, and then we'll go up on the stage and they can start running through the songs. Yeah, so tonight is kind of the first time after we've loaded everything in, we've had a chance to get everything together, work out all the kinks where I, get to take what I've done in previs and start looking at it in the real world. And again, start making tweaks, adjustments and changes. So then I will start going through this, this, this evening into the wee hours of the night of starting to go through the songs of the show, uh, looking at all the lighting looks where, you know, make sure all the lights are pointed where they're supposed to be, make sure they're, you know, the colors are supposed to be and anything other little changes I might wanna make just based on you know, what may be different this year.
today? Band A. <laughs> uh, the band's here today. We're gonna run through the show, make sure uh, any, all the keys are good and no key changes need to happen or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun day rehearsing with the band. Uh, it's good to see all the guys again. The prep is decided basically by the, by the makeup of the band. When it gets decided by Martin and the music director, how many string players we'll have, how many horn players, whether or not we'll have background singers, sometimes we do, what the lineup is on the stage, then I just make sure and order the right amount of in-ear units, transmitters and receivers for that number of players and what other specific things they need. So for the Joy Christmas Tour, we are on Yamaha Digital PM10 consoles. Uh, PM7, PM10 is usually our choice of console for um, Joy of Christmas Tour. And for us, for me personally, it's one of my favorite desks. I love the way it operates. I love the sound. I love, uh, I love everything about it. And it helps us uh, to get up really quick. The sound quality is amazing. Um, you know, if we need a track, if we're recording for a broadcast or whatever, we can do all that integrated with the desk. And it just makes things very streamlined to, uh, to get all that done. I like whenever a band walks into the room for the first time for their first sight of the stage to be like, wow, that looks killer. Everything gets dialed in as we go, song by song with the band. And because it's a digital console, I, I, I make sure and update the memory as we go. And they all know that when I do that, they make decisions when they ask for something, they know that it's going to kind of be what they call a global change. You know, they don't, they don't change their mind in every song and this one I want that or that. Everyone gets their mix together. That's the object of the rehearsals. And then once we, we always start with just the band by themselves so that when Martina walks in, they need no more attention. Then I could just concentrate on her and mix her. Her I mix, depending on if, if it's an intro for a song, she might little, need a little piano at the intro to get her pitch or a little bit of hi-hat and snare to get the time, or acoustic guitar if that's doing the intro, and then bring that down. So I'm actually mixing her, but the band, they know that theirs is done. If they have a request, they'll wait till the song is finished or till the end of rehearsal. One thing that you can't have happen anytime you have musicians and an artist come into a rehearsal situation or sound check or show, you can't have them wait on you. If, you, if anybody's gonna be waiting, I'd rather be waiting on them. And that's, that's my main goal is everything that has to happen to get to that point has to happen today. The entire band is on ears. The guitar player has ears and a wedge. Because sometimes a lot of guitar players like to hear their guitar out of a real speaker rather than out of a little earbud. So he leaves one ear out and listens to his guitar and his wedge, basically. And then for Martina, she's on both. She has wedges and ears. And part of the reason for that is that for singers, it's often uncomfortable to sing with your ears plugged. It's weird, you hear the voice in your head. So often she'll take one ear out, depending on what she needs, and she still has the wedges in front of her. And of course, for when she starts talking with the audience, when you have ears in, you have no back and front. You just have left and right. So you can get a little disoriented. So, it, you know, you won't know if you hear a voice that you'll just look and the person might be right in front of you. So. She'll take ears out to t dialogue with the audience, but so the reason for both. What I do for Martina, for wedges and ears is always the same. Doesn't matter whether it's Christmas or not. Make sure the stage is covered like it is when she walks around. Only specific thing I do for when there's a combo, like what Martina does, is I make sure that there's a, a delay function for the mix that goes to the ears. Because when you take one ear out, now you're hearing the voice sooner in your ear then you're hearing it from around you. And it can be a little disconcerting. So I just delay that just a little bit. It's like 10, 15 milliseconds so that it lines up. And that's, that's really the only consideration for when you're using both. So the band was in today. We ran through our first day of rehearsal with them and uh, things went great. There's a few little things that they changed on us, uh, which is fine. Minor, minor details, but we've made the changes. It can be as simple as a, the type of light that they use to, they need a different chair or whatever, you know. Uh, 
power at a different point. So we're just doing that kind of stuff. Rebattery, make sure we're batteried up, ready to go for tomorrow. Everyone out here is on wireless and RF, so that makes a big difference too, uh, making sure that we're um, just ready for them to walk in tomorrow and do the same thing. So the, the last day of rehearsals to me is just literally, we should be basically like it's gonna be the first show. We use the term rehearsals and it can be a dress rehearsal if you wanna call it that, but it's just fine tuning. You know, I, I, I'd love to be able to run the show with everybody and run it as a show, no stopping. Uh, if a mistake happens, you just blow right through it because that's what's gonna to have to happen if there's an audience there. We can't stop and start over. So when it comes to loadout, it's more of just, uh, whether it's a ramp or a loading dock, we're usually out around an hour and a half with this tour, which is two trucks on the Christmas tour. And load-ins, usually about three hours, maybe four, depending on how detailed our set is for that day. You know, usually it's all instruments backline first, set pieces, get the risers up, Christmas trees put away. And then uh, from there, once consoles are flipped and all, it's just starting to send what cases need to get out of the way into the truck. And then just have them stay off the side because we always have a way that the truck back needs to happen. And I'll be the one in the truck sending it in the truck or I'll be the one in the truck catching the cases as they come in, make sure they go in the right spots. So loadout for me started about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, and whenever I started looking at case counts, how many cases we've got, what sizes they are. I'm in two semis, two 53-foot trailers. So it's not a, quote, big show, but it's two really full 53-foot trailers. So um, I've seen other tours where this would be a three-truck tour. Pretty much sound and band gear is, is one truck and the other truck is lighting, the Christmas tree stuff, wardrobe, you know, stuff like that. Of course, when we move in here, things change. Uh, everyone will give me their final list of case counts and I will put it in my program that I use for truck packing and, and, and make a complete truck pack, make sure it fits. What needs to turn 90 degrees, what needs to go straight in, that kind of stuff. So, you know, the, the thing is, is that the hands have no idea where anything goes, we have to tell them. So you have to be really on your P's and Q's. Safety is a big issue with us. Once we get everything down and the, get ready to load the trucks, what order it goes in, a pet peeve of mine, and I know pet peeve of my guys, is that whenever you send stuff in the truck and it doesn't work, you gotta turn around and take it back out. Well, that's just wasting time. And whenever in a simple truck pack plan can make that easier. And so uh, I try and, uh, try and be as organized as I can and I make a truck pack up once I know it's gonna work and we've done it, then I laminate it, stick it on the back of the truck with Velcro and everybody gets a uh, truck load. So it doesn't matter who you are on my crew, you can pull that truck pack off, look at it and say, okay, the next case is this one. And nothing gets in the truck the wrong way, which can cause an issue and time lost. So just get this thing out of here as fast as we can, as safely as we can. But I've got a group, a great group of guys working for me, with me, and they know how to do their jobs really great and I don't have to worry about it. And I know if they make a mistake or something happens, it's because there's a really good reason. It's not because they weren't paying attention. So I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's just a matter of us all getting on the same page and working as a complete unit. So rehearsals went great. Everybody did a great job. Uh, everybody came prepared, which is awesome. Anything that came up to be an issue was fixed, handled. We had a great time. We laughed a lot, which is key to this whole thing. We're gonna head out and do a show. Long ago, it's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing, and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful.